Hey, hello, howdy, how you doing? Every Project Zomboid video that I post on this channel has one thing in common. It's riddled with people asking for advice when it comes to mods. Since production on the next series has hit some roadblocks, I decided to make a video covering 10 of my favorite mods that I think every player should use in their playthroughs. These are in no particular order, and it should be noted that this is just my opinion, and it may differ from yours, and that's okay. First mod on the list is Common Sense, authored by Bitbraven. This is a huge QOL update for most players as it adds things like, quite frankly, should be in the base game. It doesn't require any additional mods for it to work, and is functional in both single player and multiplayer settings. It has also no known incompatibilities, meaning it can be added in conjunction with any other mod in the workshop and still work perfectly fine. The list of changes this mod adds includes using crowbars to pry open doors and windows, adds the ability to craft spears out of mops and brooms, allows you to open canned food and other non-perishables with knives, screwdrivers, and other tools, and so much more. Even if you're a pure vanilla player that's just looking to add one or two mods, this is worth checking out as it doesn't really add any new items to the game, it just adds abilities to several items. Next on my list is Better Sorting by Chobits Crazy. This is one of my all-time favorite mods in the game, and for good reason. It essentially overhauls all item categories and breaks them down to be more in-depth and better organized. It can be added or removed from any current playthrough without issue, and has no known mod incompatibilities. I run this on every single player playthrough as well as every wipe on both of our multiplayer servers. For transparency, I'll show you what the item list looks like on a pure vanilla run, and a run with the mod active. The first video here is a segment taken from one of my world record attempt streams that is a pure vanilla run. The link for that is in the top right corner, but that's not important here. The point of focus is the item categories in the top left corner of the screen. All items are put into a broad category like weapons or crafting. Got that image in your head? Alright, well here's what it looks like with better sorting. This clip is taken from a run on one of my Zomboid servers running the better sorting mod. As you can see, all crafting options are broken down into their respective skills. This gives items like ripped sheets the crafting tailoring category, while items like the metal pipe and sheet have the metalworking category. This extends to weapons as well. The regular hammer is given the tool category since it can be used as a tool, while the club hammer is assigned the weapon melee category since it can't be used to craft items without mods. At its core, it's a very simple mod that allows OCD freaks like me to sleep peacefully with our 55 crates all sorted by individual category. Following that gem is one of my favorite mods to recommend to beginners. Weapon Condition Indicator by Noctis Falco does exactly what its title says. This mod does require mod options for build 41 to run correctly, so make sure you grab that before hopping into a game, though if you're playing on single player it should auto activate as long as it's in your library. Weapon Condition Indicator gives you several indicators that track your weapon's condition. I know, crazy. This applies to any item on your belt, in holsters, or slings as well, so it's a great way to see how much longer you can fight the undead before you break everything you touch. The mod also prompts a little notification above your head every time your item diminishes in quality as well, so you'll get a plethora of warnings as your hammer goes from max condition down to a broken mess. Along with its base configuration, Weapon Condition Indicator offers a ton of customizable settings that allow you to change what all gets shown. Menus like how full a water bottle is and all that can be turned off and you can even change the direction of the bar as the durability of an item depletes. To top it off, there's also an option to display ammo count, both for the amount of bullets remaining in a magazine and how many individual rounds you're carrying on your person. Overall, it's a fantastic mod that provides the player with a ton of information that they can use or choose not to use. This next mod is a little cheeky, but this is one for all the lazy players like me out there. Reload All Mags by Fotech allows you to reload every empty magazine in your inventory with one click. This way, you don't have to manually go through all 50 magazines and select each one. This includes any magazine from any backpacks or bags that you're currently holding onto as well. Essentially, it just takes all the extra work of moving each item and does it all for you. This mod works in both single player and multiplayer and also works with the most popular gun mods including Brita's Weapons, Firearms 41, and Vanilla Firearms Expanded. If you're sitting here going, oh hey, that's cool, but does it also have a menu to unload magazines so that it can farm reloading XP? Why yes, yes it does. Now, this isn't a mod that's going to revitalize the game for you and completely change how you play, but it'll certainly take away all the extra legwork you have to put up with when you're like me and tend to carry 10 to 20 mags on you at all times. The fifth mod on the list is Has Been Read by, and I apologize in advance for this, P -p 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 Pale. I love that name, by the way. 
It's another gem mod that I run in almost every playthrough. It's compatible with both single player and multiplayer as most of these mods are. The big pull for this one is the fact that it adds icons next to all skill books and recipe magazines, which allows you to track which ones have been read and which ones you need to binge read next time it's raining out. It also has an icon for books that are in progress, so you'll never have to go through and check each book's page count before grabbing them. Outside of the base mod, adding mod options for Build 41 gives you some customizable settings such as the ability to specify marks on all of the book categories, as well as CDs and VHS tapes. I don't have a lot to break down with this one, it's pretty straightforward and it's one of the most beloved mods in the PZ community, for good reason too. Number 6 on my list is the infamous Expanded Helicopter Events by Shark. It does require one other mod to work correctly, with that being Easy Config Chucked, so be sure to grab that before hopping in. This mod replaces the base vanilla helicopter event and adds several dynamic events to spice up the game. These events include, but are not limited to, crashed helicopters which can be looted, the ability for helicopters to shoot at the player, injuring them if hit, and a variety of helicopter types such as Police Heli, a news copter, and a FEMA emergency drop which drops loot for players to find. There's a ton more, especially once you hit the late game, all with unique experiences. In short, this mod takes the base event and improves it exponentially. This mod works well in single player, but we have had issues running it effectively in multiplayer dedicated servers with audio not ending correctly, permanent heli events triggering as in they just never go away, and a couple other issues. That being said, it's still a fantastic mod and one worth trying out if you want to expand the game a little without entirely overhauling your experience. Authentic Z by Authentic Peach is one of my all-time favorite mods. It isn't a necessary addition or one that really changes how you play the game in any stretch, but it does do something to the extent of adding over 100 unique outfits to the game. This includes famous characters like Jason Voorhees, Freddy Krueger, Pennywise, Stormtroopers, the Lego helmet from the original Dead Rising, and so much more. It's also packed with different variations for use on multiplayer servers, so you can choose to only add the backpack options, which allow you to upgrade your bags, or if the mod is too overbearing for you, there is an Authentic Z Lite option, which you can tick, and that reduces the chaos a little bit. Outside of just clothing, the mod adds a dozen or so plushies to collect, which can be stored on backpacks. If plushies aren't your thing, well, don't worry, because you can also attach items like weapons, water bottles, pills, and bandages onto upgraded backpacks as well. Again, this is one of my all-time favorite mods and helps to make the game as dramatic or as wacky as you'd like it to be. In my opinion, it's worth throwing on just to see all the crazy characters running around, and it's not even an overbearing amount, you maybe see one every few thousand zombies. I don't know, it's just a nice touch, go check it out. Another staple in the PZ community, and a mod that I believe should be in the base game, is Become Desensitized by Monkey. This mod allows you to gain the desensitized trait after killing a set amount of zombies. It works in both single player and multiplayer settings, and is one that I run on every playthrough and both of my servers. The mod works like this. After achieving a certain number of kills, which can be set in the sandbox settings, you have a percentage chance that rolls every night at midnight in game to see if you gain the trait. As you continue to kill zombies, that percentage chance increases until you hit the maximum kill count needed, which is also set in sandbox settings. After you reach this, you'll automatically gain the desensitized trait at the end of the day. It's one of those mods that just makes sense. You should be panicked at the beginning of the apocalypse, but after killing 2,000 zombies, you shouldn't scream in terror when you see one slumped against a building. Nearing the end of the list here, I wanted to throw in Autotsar trailers created by Burris. This mod adds a ton of trailers to the game, including, but not limited to, movable generators, petrol tankers, and campers, along with a few dozen normal trailers all varying in size. It's one of those mods that just adds more to the game and makes looting runs much more efficient. It also allows for a working large-scale generator that you can move throughout a construction site as you build out your massive fortress. It's a nice addition that can either reward or punish you for your actions. If you're greedy, it'll allow you to loot way more than others, with the offset being you're going to drive slower, and the trailer can get stuck on objects like light poles, effectively trapping you as zombies surround your vehicle. Last on the list, but certainly not least, is the Scrap Weapons mod by DJ Virus. This is the definition of an endgame mod that adds the ability for you to use metalworking to craft a variety of polearms and other weapons using metal scraps that you'll accumulate through grinding metalworking. 
If you pair this with the Scrap Armor mod from the same collection, you can turn yourself into a walking juggernaut covered in metal, wielding a sharpened stop sign. It's a fantastic mod, and while it may be slightly overpowered, it's incredibly satisfying to listen to swords slice through zombies and hit concrete. One of my all-time favorites by far, and one I highly encourage everyone to check out. And there you have it, 10 mods that every player should try out in their next playthrough. Let me know your thoughts in the comments on any that you think I missed, or how terrible this list is and why yours is better. As always, a massive thank you to my YouTube members and Patreon supporters who make it possible for me to make videos for you. I appreciate you all, and as always, thanks for stopping by.